uh, Biocap for the people at home. Is there anybody else here recording? And if so, what affiliation? Uh, Chris Goodrow from the Rwanda. Okay. Um, anybody else? No. All right. Let me jump right in. First up, we have public hearing and site plan review for Contest Analytical Laboratory, 40 Spruce Street. Start with this, and I'll show okay. you. Um, we got I, something I to read into the this. Planning Board will hold a public hearing in the hearing room of the Town Hall, 60 Center Square, December 2nd, 2014 at 6 p.m. in the application for a site plan review submitted by Thomas Verratti Sr. to construct a 6,000 square foot laboratory building and an 1,800 square foot storage building at 40 Spruce Street. Information is on file with the Planning Board. Police report. Police report. Contest analytical laboratory and storage. Site location is 40 Spruce Street. Applicant is Thomas Verratti. Owner is Thomas Verratti. Security system, interior lighting, yes. Ex exterior lighting, yes. Alarms, yes. Recommendations, yes. It is recommend recommended sufficient lighting should be installed to illuminate any entrances to the existing building, proposed buildings, and the proposed parking areas to reduce the potential for crime activity and improve safety for any pedestrian traffic. It is recommended to, is recommending lighting should be installed with considerable consideration given to the residential properties to the east side of the site. Um, signage. Business name and address, yes. Exit and entrance, driveway at 40 Spruce Street, recommendations, yes. Um, it is recommended the business name and the address be clearly visible at all hours in event of emergency response to the site. Traffic impact, a traffic study would, would not be required for this site plan for, for this site plan review. Um, it is, let's see here, hold on. Location of, exit, of entrance and exit south side of Spruce Street at number 40 Spruce Street. Traffic volume increase, yes. Traffic volume, traffic control changes, yes. Recommendations, yes. It is recommended that the access driveway be widened to 24 feet to accommodate for two-way traffic at the site. It is recommended a center line be added in the driveway at the intersection with, with Spruce Street to delineate traffic lines, <coughs> lanes. Uh, one more. It is recommended that and additional handicapped parking space be added to adjacent to the currently proposed space to conform with local bylaws. Um, any additional recommendations? Yes. It is recommended that a sidewalk be installed at the con current facility directly across Bruce Street from the proposed sidewalk to, impro to improve pedestrian safety, especially during the winter months. This I, I you want me to read all this? Oh, God. I you don't have to if you want to wave the reading because Gary knows all this. It was yeah, too I mean, Gary. To Here's the fire this. department. Like Here's the pages. fire department. Read that and then Gary can address these. All right. Good. Gary? Love you, Gary. Um, this is from the town of East Elmetto Fire Department. Um, for 40, 40 Spruce Street. The East Meadow Fire Department will request the following of the owners for the proposed build located at 40 Spruce Street. An addressable fire alarm panel for both main and out storage buildings. A knockbox shall be installed in the interior, in the ex, on the exterior of the building next to any entry doorway. All unheated storage buildings will have a heat all unheated storage buildings will have a heat will have heat detectors connected to the main fire panel. Fire extinguishers will be placed per fire code. Mulch of any kind will not be used around the buildings. Any other questions, please call Ben Cody, Fire Inspector East Elmetta. Okay. All right. <coughs> you want to present your the DPW letter to <laughs> Mr. Weiner and his response back. But it will be part of the record, obviously. Yeah, yeah. it's 
three pages long. Uh, good evening. My name is Gary Weiner. I'm an engineer working for uh, and Mr. Thomas Ferrati Jr., who are the project proponents and, and also the owners and operators of Contest Analytical Laboratories uh, located at 39 Spruce Street. Uh, the Ferratis are proposing to construct two buildings on an existing uh, site across the street from their current building. Uh, it's numbered 40 uh, Spruce Street. The site currently has a single family residence on it, uh, it's unoccupied. Uh, and it will be turned into, if you will, storage uh, for the contest laboratories. The site also uh, has been partially cleared uh, because of the residents, uh, but to the rear of the, of the parcel, you have a wooded area, uh, lightly wooded, and um, a boring vegetated wetland delineated by Pioneer Environmental, uh, soon to be known as Wetland Consultings, Inc. Uh, uh, because of the sale of Pioneer Environmental. But the blue line indicates the, the wetlands is located on the southwest corner of the site, right in this area here. The bulk of the site currently is, is wooded in this area, and you can see the existing home that, that is on the site. And uh, the sloping is pretty gradual. There's less than two feet of elevation difference on the site. As you go north off the site and towards uh, uh, Prospect Street, uh, there is a steep hill and, and a, a good, goodly amount of grade differential that, that climbs up the hill. Uh, Spruce Street in this area is a, a uh, private way. Um, the public end ends about 200 feet to the uh, west of, of this location. What is being proposed are two buildings, uh, a 6,000 square foot labor laboratory uh, building at the front of the parcel. Uh, at the, the setback uh, that is required for the commercial zone. The uh, single family residence would remain in place, be used for storage, and a secondary storage building, a warehousing of uh, 1,800 square feet, would be constructed just to the, um, if you will, just to the south of the existing residence. Parking uh, requirements for the facility require 32 parking places, uh, 34 including too handicapped, uh, as noted and requested by the, uh, the police department, um, would be constructed. The parking area is all to the rear uh, and in, if you will, the southerly portion of the site. The site would be accessed by a 20-foot wide um, driveway, uh, two 10-foot travel lanes. We have spoken in, with the, uh, the police about that and they had recommended the 24 feet. However, due to the sideline constraints of the build and the building size, uh, it leaves us about three feet of, of space between the abutter, if you will, and, and the property line, which we would like to use for grading purposes. Uh, the 20 foot width is the minimum that's allowed by under your parking regulations and, and under the zoning regulations for access to a, a, site, a business site. Um, and we believe that it's certainly adequate um, these are going to be employees uh, and, and a few small trucks, if you will, to access the, the storage building at the rear. Uh, there won't be a lot of traffic, obviously, for, for the purposes of, of use of that driveway, so that uh, the 20 feet should be more than adequate. The uh, stormwater uh, has been re reviewed, and, and the uh, memos in the, uh, in the file indicate uh, a, a significant review by the Department of Public Works. Uh, we have um, worked out back and forth, and I believe, speaking with Mr. Parent just before the meeting, all issues have been resolved with the Department of Public Works, and uh, we have amended the plans uh, slightly to reflect con the concerns that they had. Drainage basically is surface uh, that, uh, again, with the steep hill and, and the runoff from the east of the end, uh, that will be controlled using grass swales, which will split, if you will, and divide bring water towards Spruce Street and the majority of water would come in grass swales and go to the wetland where it currently goes now. Uh, we aren't changing the, the topography to change your watershed um, so that the we continue to uh, accept the, the water off of this area and, and bring it to the wetland. Uh, in accordance with the uh, mass regulations and also uh, the town stormwater bylaw, uh, peak flows are attenuated through the use of a very shallow detention basin. This is a, about a, a two, 
two and a half foot deep uh, detention basin. What is going to happen is with sheet flow, water will, will flow from the driveway. There's a high point here. Water would flow from the driveway onto to the parking area, and then there's an infiltration trench, no berm, so that water flows into the infiltration trench, then fills and spills, if you will, to the detention basin uh, for, for peak rate attenuation. We will be filing a notice of intent. Pioneer or Wetland Consultants, Inc. will be filing with the Conservation Commission. We, we certainly are within the buffer zone uh, for the construction of the, the detention basin in, in that area. Uh, lighting would be handled with two um, relatively short light poles located for the parking area. The pe this is a paved walkway to the building would be lit from wall packs and, and spotlighting that it currently, there's spotlight for the number 40, but wall packs on the buildings would provide the needed illumination for, for anyone in traffic or needing to, to walk at nighttime. Uh, the, the yellow circles here indicate the, the maximum uh, one lumen extension of, of the light. You can see that basically it's broken off for the to the east because of the shield that would be placed along the back side of, of the, uh, the light pole so that uh, the light would be directed, if you will, towards the, the parking area. Um, we have landscaping to the front. Uh, we'll have mature trees placed. <coughs> also a row of arborvitaes would be planted alongside the building. Uh, to the north, or I'm sorry, to the east of the swale uh, that would be constructed uh, and in, in a future time it would obscure, if you will, uh, the building uh, along that side. Those really are the highlights of, of what we're proposing to do. Um, you may remember that there was some discussion about constructing uh, additional um, building at the current site of 39 uh, uh, Spruce Street. However, with the acquisition of number 40, um, it, it offered the opportunity for a, a more lab space and, and a standalone new building that would help them in their uh, carrying out their, their work. Uh, we do have very rough from the uh, proposed supplier of the building. These are the, there's two. One is, if I can, the first sheet is the, the building to the 6,000 square feet, and the, the second sheet is the storage building that would be constructed. There's, there's three yards to the number. <coughs> On the initial plans that we submitted to the to the board, and also during the round table, um, we, we looked at, because of the proximity to the property line, the driveway, the um, proximity, the three feet, yeah. and the grade differential indicated that we probably would need a short retaining wall of about three feet. And that is shown on the plans uh, um, that were, were submitted. However, in discussion, Mr. Barati has had discussions uh, with the abutter, the wheeler, and uh, they are, are in the process, I believe, of, uh, allowing the abutters allowing sloping rather than the um, retaining wall to be constructed uh, there is a low area here which really would benefit this the, the abutter also by by if you will filling to that that low point uh, it does not negatively impact anything that would happen uh, in the future for the the abutter uh, but it does allow us not to have to build a wall and to provide a basically a three to one and almost four to one slope um, for, for the uh, entrance driveway in the, along this area here where the slope, where the grade is about three feet differential. Be happy to answer questions. All right, anybody want to start? Uh, just from this entire uh, parcel is in the commercial zone, correct? Right, correct. Okay. Right. okay. And I'll, the house got built there, but it did once upon a time. Uh, well, um, I'm assuming uh, on that sheet to the right is residential property. Yes, from this property line to the east is residential. From this property line to the west is business. Okay, um, as a buffer in between um, the residential and that, are you planning on doing any plantings or anything? Right. Um, and what type are we looking at? 
along this area here, uh, we're, we're planning on, on having Arbor Vitae's planted as a, as a row. Uh, 13 of them uh, from the building face, or one a little bit in front of the building face, past the building face. When you get towards the back in this area here, we're not doing much grading, so there's some mature trees along this line that would, would not be disturbed. Um, but, but basically the, the, the buffering is, is to the front of the parcel. Um, all of this area is all wooded. Uh, you can see there's a number of, or, or there is a paper street, a couple of paper streets <coughs> that exist, but um, the existing house is probably a good 125 feet from the property line. It's currently vacant uh, from about the rear line of number 40 to the south is all wooded. Um, you, you talked about filling in some areas over there behind between the parking lot of yeah right in right there, there yeah. is there any sort of written agreement or anything like that we're we're working uh, mr. Roddy spoken with the, uh, the I, talk, I talked to Tom Wheeler yesterday and uh, he was gonna send his attorney but I guess he didn't show up no no he's here oh he agreed that we could use that as a, as a I thought it was more than that. I thought it was a burn, but yeah, I, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah he misspoke. It's okay. not. It's, it's, not, it's not that severe. It's just a sloping away. So Correct. We need to clear up what's going to be going Correct. Yeah. He said Tom, burn. Tom told Tom something different than what he was right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I told him a burn. Like okay. I thought it was going to be more severe. There's going to be a written agreement. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a written agreement. Yes, we'll have a, 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 some sort of boundary um, name. Right. What, what we would look look for is hold the three feet of level area, if you will, to the property line, and then there's about a three foot elevational difference. So at three to one, we would be looking to come ten feet in, clear the brush that's along there. Um, there's a fence, but the fence is almost eighty feet off of the property line, so we wouldn't be disturbing the fence. But about ten feet of 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 area from from Spruce Street back about a hundred feet or so just to make that great transition and, and basically it's from here if you will to there in terms of, of just dirt place to slope down to the grade no berm no it's just earth fill so through the chair that will um, not impact Mr. Mueller's parking lot at all because it's outside the fence. Oh no, yeah, exactly. His parking lot on the other side. He's never used that land, but there's sure I understand that. I just, I, I know the property fairly well, so. Right. The fence is about eight, almost 80 feet okay. from the property so, line, so we're, we're in that, that brush yeah. area. Yeah. He just doesn't want to give up the right to use it itself. Of course, I understand. understandable. I'm just, I mean, we would add, basically, it would be a request for a construction fill easement, and it could almost go away once he sees it. Anybody else? Why open up to the public? Um, so, what you're looking at doing is basically sloping it instead of doing a retaining wall in there? Yes. Yes. I left the retaining wall on because the agreement was not in place. Um, DPW asked me about removing the detail, and I explained to them that until that was in, in place, we'd rather not remove that detail. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, because I'd be a little concerned with a three foot high wall next to the driveway without doing any type of uh, um, fabric. Fen well, I'm thinking fencing or anything. Oh. If someone comes in and mm -hmm. all of a sudden over a three foot wall, eh, it's a pretty good little spill with your car. Right. Um, not that anyone should be racing through there, <laughs> but that's pretty close to the driveway, and the driveway is already at the minimum requirement, 20 feet instead of the 24. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, one other question that brings to mind, the, um, is there going to be a fence along the parking lot separating it from the detention basin? Uh, we, we will be fencing the detention basin in, in its entirety. So you'll have something to keep somebody from driving out of the parking lot into the detention Correct. basin? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Senator? 
I, I mean, we, we brought this up once before on the Bay Path situation when we had a retention basin also in the same spot, pretty much. They came to us with a fence proposal. I said, well, why don't we put up some sort of <coughs> guardrail or something because when you hit that with snow or anything, it's just going to topple over and might be beneficial to the applicant to maybe put something of that nature, which will maybe last longer for you instead of putting a fence up. Our, it's just a thought. Yeah. Our, my only concern is that the unfenced and it, more in subdivisions than he, and, than commercial and business, but even in, in this area where you have standing water, and again, this is very shallow. This this pond is only this deep, if you will, but the water's going to sit there for about 16 hours potentially on a, on a very good storm. That if kids decide they you know they play in the background here, that, that the smaller kids were just trying to prevent that from happening. That's all. All right. Okay. The public. Anybody like to speak <coughs> on this um, before, you know, or against? Being known to bring it back to the board. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Um. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want to say something? No. Okay. okay. We just want. Our position is that yep. we just want to subject to our right. Which, okay. The thing of it is, if we close the public hearing, yeah, we can't take any more information in. Okay. We did that with Bay Path, so I'd true. rather just have a discussion with the board first. Fine. Okay. Um, through the chair. Yes, absolutely. Um, how close to the bottom of the detention pond is the actual groundwater height? Um, detention ponds are made in such a way so that it's supposed to soak back into the soil. Right. We've seen in town where it doesn't. Um, I mean, are we looking, has it been tested? Is it close to the groundwater height? Is it? It is. Uh, um, and if you read the correspondence back and forth between DPW and myself, uh, one of the concerns was groundwater and the fact that mm -hmm. there's been a number of basins that are sitting in groundwater. Mm -hmm. And what, what we've done with this particular basin is to provide uh, an outlet. Originally, the outlet was going to be about two and a half feet up, um, almost to the top of the berm, you know, to store water. And, and DPW was concerned because when we did our, we did two test pits, uh, well, actually a test pit and, and an augering, uh, groundwater is down around 36 to 40 inches or so below the existing surface. And the soils in and of themselves are poor. I mean, these are very tight Ludlow Wareham soils where they're silty loams, basically. So that there's not a lot of infiltration that's occurring, but, uh, and we need to have that separation above the groundwater. So we, the bottom of the pond is, gives that two feet of separation. But in addition, what we've done is we've lowered the outlet to the bottom elevation of the pond so it doesn't hold water. When we did that, we had to enlarge the basin more for, for storage capability and capacity. Um, but uh, in, in doing that, we're now going to have a dry bottom basin because you're going to have a, a continuous outlet, if you will, out of that basin at the low end. So um, if you get a, if the groundwater table rises enough and we get our storms, then where you're seeing in some places in town, you just have standing water. In this case, it'll drain. It'll drain to the top of the stone. I'm going to throw it out there because it's me. <laughs> um, knowing the groundwater height and all, wouldn't it have made more sense to do an impervious pavement under the parking area a to where pervious, a pervious pavement. pavement to where um, the water drains into there? It looks the same size as the t tension basin, plus you're three feet higher. Um, it, it, if I, if You've got a lot the, more drainage in all that way. Right, but if, if one of the concerns is in that with the pervious pavement is obviously cost. Mm. It is extremely expensive to do and do correctly. And um, that wasn't the only consideration, but certainly plays into to, um, if we have the capability of, of storing water in an, in an open basin um, and not impacting having a, a wet bottom, then I would move it. I mean, we moved in that direction. Um, to say, pervious pavement is probably about four to five times as expensive as regular paving. And, and 
you know, mm -hmm. it certainly is an option when if we had we are constricted by land, then we, we might have to deal with that. But we did not. For the square footage of the building, what was the required uh, parking? I mean, uh, 30, is this thirty-two spaces required? We have thirty-four. I mean, I'm just thinking down the road, any expansion in here, you're going to need additional parking. Um, where the detention basin area would have given you additional parking area if you did all the... Yeah. And, and maybe we, if that happens, you may have to go to a pervious pavement for the additional parking in order to make it all come together. Um, crosswalk across Spruce Street, I know did put it in. Uh, originally, we talked about space about location, and, and we settled on there's a, an, currently an existing island there that has two trees that will be cut, and and this turned into a uh, basically try to direct people to come come through here. The amount of foot traffic, I, I think, is going to be extremely minimal, um, but we will we do have this in, in this location here. And that lines up, if you will, to the doorway button. Again, but it also looks like it lines up right in the middle of the driveway. The driveway. Right. But you are talking, uh, you know, over in this location is also driveway. Mm -hmm. This is the driveway for the others. Um, and, and frankly, the, the main entrance now to contest number 39 is on the side of the building or to the back of the building. Mm -hmm. uh, this is really. When I was there, it was storage. Yeah. Oh, we have very, extremely low traffic on, on, on the spruce. We don't let anybody come to the back, like you said. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so there's no car traffic there. I mean, there be, as far as people crossing mm -hmm. there, it should be five or six people a day, maybe. Uh, because the, that last space doesn't require a lot of staff. It's just people like traffic. The chair still. Yep, yep. I just know that you had come back, um, come to us before looking uh, for additional parking. Um, and if you're looking for additional parking, then I'm assuming if these buildings don't need a lot, they're going to park down and in here, which will give you a lot more foot traffic going across the street. Um, I think yeah, that's a reasonable. Back uh, with a whole different plan down there, right? But this is the plan now. You know, this will be hoping for several years. We have mm -hmm. no idea we to start to predict the future. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, I mean, they were looking for additional no, no, parking. I, I understand so that. This seems to solve that problem. Um, well, I wouldn't assume that these buildings are going to, even though you are required 32 spots, it seems like a storage building isn't going to require that many people. It, it's, uh, it's the East Lawn Metal Park and the requirements are. No. are <laughs> Inflexible yeah. for use. We don't actually think we're going to ever use that parking lot in the back at all. Mm -hmm. We have enough spaces in there already to fill whatever we use for that building. But, but like you said, we got to do what we got to do. We got to put the spots in. Can we grasp them? <coughs> um. It's been answered. Okay, and fence around it. I was just making sure the dumpster was fenced in. And also, straight shot. I did see that. Yeah. <laughs> um, was there any other concerns? I know we waived the reading from DPW um, that jumped out. The concern was the pavement, pavement with, I, I think, the lack of traffic does meet the requirements regardless. I can't see them going to 24. Mm -hmm. I don't think that makes any yeah. sense at all. You no, know, right up until the end of the day, DPW has been talking with Gary and everything, according to Dan and Bob, everything's been met. Okay. Yeah. That's the only thing that stood out to me, and I don't really see a problem mm -hmm. with that. Well, with Rick, it wasn't a requirement, it was just a recommendation. Right. I understand.
Whoops. Let me see. <laughs> Could be. No previous board member. I'm I'm all set for right now. Any other? Do you, uh, want to close the public hearing? Is that a motion made? Or do you want to leave it open for discussion? Or is there any other? I think we're. You're mm -hmm. keeping George's motion to close no, no. public hearing. Yeah, I, I, I moved it. That's I didn't withdraw it. Yeah. You know, we didn't vote on it, so we can still discuss. But okay. Mm -hmm. So we're not voting on this tonight. It's just a discussion, or we are we are voting on this tonight. You can well, vote, we can on, it. vote on it. Like but I said, I think that input later. No, what it was is if we closed the public hearing, right? And if there was any other information that needed to be brought in the DPW or whatever, we wouldn't have been able to at okay. that point. But we don't need any more information. Okay. So we do have a motion made to close. The I will public second hearing. the meeting. All right. I'll second the motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to approve site plan as presented. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Gentlemen, you're all set. Thank you very much for coming. Pending. And presenting that. Pending. Pending. Thank the you. The written Thank application you. from the butter. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, I got rid of my silver. It's okay. The agreement will be a butter. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> so you want to come sit here? It's so much easier. All right. You're good. Good night. Thank you very much. Thank you. Up is our 615 request for signage for a Coyote's Den 182 Benton Drive. Town application, sign permit application for Coyote's Den self storage, J. LaFlake. Uh, street address is 182 Benton Drive, East Long Meadow. Uh, near intersection is Industrial Drive, Benton Drive. Square footage of the post sign is 93 square feet. It is single faced. It is attached to the building. Projection of any is five feet. Uh, setback and property line is 70 feet. Uh, total number of existing signs. Oh, I'm sorry. The post sign is permanent. Total number of existing signs is three. Total square footage of existing signs is 93 square feet. Total square foot of proposed signs and existing signs, 93 square feet. And we have a picture of the sign here. No, that's not. It's just a sign guy. Okay, yeah. yeah. I think there's more copies. There's a, yeah, there's another copy here. Yeah. Um, wait a minute, that's the existing. Yeah, that's, that's the existing. existing. Here we go. Hold that three cameras. All right, so what are we doing here? I've been told that uh, that you people are under the belief that this sign was never properly permitted 17 years ago. Is that correct? Uh, we couldn't find any evidence to support that. Yes, that is correct. In order to believe that, this, this is what had to have happened. Okay, in 1996, when I went, we, I built this in three phases. In 1996, when I went before the planning board for the first phase of this project. Now, I don't think I need to tell you guys that uh, part of the site plan review. There's a lot to do with signage. Probably about a third of the site plan review has to do with signs. Not necessarily. You know, we just had a site plan review. We had nothing to do with signage. Well, I'm in a project like this, site, site, signage is all over the site plan review. Signage and site plan review are actually two different things. Sign permit, yes, it may be a part of it, but they are actually, in essence, two separate 
Right. It's part things. of the site plan review, is it not? It is and it isn't. If you got a site plan review and a site plan review was approved, you would still have to come for a site permit. All right. Okay. Okay. You go before the planning board, right? Correct. Okay. So the planning board in 1996 totally ignored the sign. Okay. Then we built it. Then we got our building permit and we built it. We put up the sign there. So if we showed what wasn't, if we had an as built, and then we didn't build that as built, why didn't the building inspector say something's wrong? That I, I can't. Okay, I, I'm, this is what had to have happened in order to, for you to believe Robin McDonald. Okay, the, build, the the planning board in 1996 screwed up. They didn't take up. They didn't take up the sign. The building permit. Uh, the building inspector, when he gave me the CO in 1996. Or in, I'm sorry, in 1997, the summer of 1997, it didn't didn't catch it. Now I don't know how that could be. Two years later, I go before a second site plan review to build the second phase. So the second planning board totally screws up and doesn't take them to the sign. The sign has nothing. The sign's been up there now for two years. So the second planning board doesn't mention it. Doesn't doesn't realize that the sign is not pop properly permitted. Gives me a site plan, gives me the uh, building permit, and I get a certificate of occupancy about six months later. And that building inspector doesn't catch it. Okay, so now we have two planning boards and two times that for a, a building inspector. Now we go to one more, a third site plan review. Okay, third site plan review on this property. Again, the same site sign has been there for now five years. Doesn't come up if you're to believe Robin McDonald, okay? And get a certificate, uh, get a, my building permit, and then I get a, my uh, certificate of occupancy. So you have three planning boards and three building inspectors looking at this property, right? So you have three planning boards, and actually it was two building inspectors. Okay, now you have a second building inspector. So now you have, that was built, the, fun, the thing was finished in 2001. So now, 13 years later, we have a different building inspector. What has ever been done about it? Okay, exactly nothing. So in order to believe Robin McDonald, three buildings, three separate planning boards screwed up, and three separate building inspectors inspections screwed up. Now, what is the common thread in those three building, three uh, planning boards? There's one common thread amongst them all. That's Director Robin with a Y. She's the common thread. She was the director then, as she is now. If she can't find the paperwork, whose problem is that? Now, do you believe three planning boards screwed up? Sure. I want you do Pretty three. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. If, a, if a sign permit was granted to the applicant, then the applicant should have a copy of that sign permit. And we should have one on record. And well, yeah, but, I, 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 but, yeah, but you should have a copy of the sign permit. Seventeen years later, I should have a copy of that sign permit. Sure. Okay. But I don't. I don't. I don't think that's reasonable. Again, but let me ask you: one of the persons on that planning board was a, a lady by the name of Marilyn Richards. Do you know her? Isn't she currently working on, or maybe has just completed an overlay? Or, you know, working all the new sign regulations. She's on the bylaw review committee. Yeah. Working on a sign bylaw. Well, I was in here one day when she was doing it this summer. Okay. Okay. So I think signs <coughs> are very near and dear to her. So you're telling me she had nothing to say about the sign that went up on that building 17 years ago. You're asking me to think for three of the boards that I can't Exactly. Possibly, I can't no, what I'm asking you is the preponderance of, that, of the evidence. Three planning boards took us, took a, gave me three separate site, I took into three separate site plan reviews, three separate building permits, and three separate certificates of occupancy. Okay, well, I've gone through all the history of all your site plans, and nowhere and anywhere is there any sign applications, nor there any sign. I, listen, I, I can't, I can't help that. You, I can't help that. That sign has been up for seventeen years. So what you're asking years. this board to do? Well, is, through the chair, may I, um, I don't believe we're here for your existing sign. It's been up. I don't know how it got put up. I don't know anything about that. I've only been on the board. This is my third year. I think what we're here for is an application. For a new sign going up to replace the one that's been up for 17 uh, years i mean i'm under the understanding though that this is a new sign that you want to put up and we have a sign request a sign permit 
and this is what we should deal with. I don't know what happened in the past. I don't think any other board member. Well, I'm I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was told, okay, that I put up that sign illegally. That's what I've been told. Okay, I hired a O'Leary company out of Southampton to do that. They've been in existence for 75 years. So you're telling me they didn't do things properly? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I don't know what happened. I don't think the board members know what happened. I think we're here. I can tell you what happened. Right, Robin no, McDonald no, no, doesn't no, no, no. keep Roth the paperwork. Right. Roth is right. Roth is right. We're here to, to approve a new sign. What happened in the past has happened in the past. But that's not for this board to discuss right now. Right now, but before us, it's a new sign that you're proposing, correct? So let's stick to that. Well, we can stick to that, but right, it's the right. one in let's, the same. Because I'm not replacing. One I'm not putting up a new sign. I'm repairing the old sign. I'm taking one down, putting the one back up. It's exactly. Statues of limitations are 10 years anyway. Again, you were, that's, if you want such a limitations, if you, for argument's sake, if we deny the sign, you can take it to the Board of Appeals and you can, you can take the argument up with them. But right now, what's in front of us is a new sign application and or a replacement sign application. So I understand where you're coming from. You have to understand where we're coming from, too. We still have a job to do. Exactly. And so did the other three planning boards. Right. But you, you guys are so much smarter than that, right? I'm not saying we are or are not. All I'm saying is we have a job to do. We're going to do it to the best of our abilities presented with the bylaws. And I'm sure have. the other three planning boards did the exact same thing. Well, I've been on the other side of this table just like you have. And the planning board, they have made mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Everybody tries to do their best. So if a mistake was made once, twice, three times, I don't know. I can't answer those questions. But it is possible. Unlikely. Is it possible Robin McDonald lost the paperwork? That's possible too. Thank you. Okay. I'm not saying that's it's not, not impossible. impossible. Yeah, yeah. Can we, can we, let's, let's, avoid, can we avoid personal attacks here? No, because I think I'm being personally attacked. Personally I've been attacked. told, no, I've been attack. told that I built no, a, I no built a facility illegally, and no. I have an illegal sign. No that's one, what it's been told. No to one me. has attacked you personally. That's personal. No, it's not. How is it not? Coyote's Den was built with my money, with my sweat, and my labor. Fine. Okay. And that's personal and to that's me. That's great. And you're a great businessman in this town. We appreciate. Your taxes, and we appreciate. You know how much your, taxes I paid to this town? We appreciate your Six hundred thousand dollars. Fine. Yeah. So we're talking here about signs. Let's talk about the sign. Let's now talk about who did what to whom thirteen years ago. Yeah. Seventeen. Whenever. Let's talk about so talk the about sign it. and the process for getting a new sign permit, and whether or not the proposed sign meets the requirements. Let me ask you, George. Law. Does it? Do you think it takes six months? <coughs> To get a sign from you? No. Neither do I. If someone comes in with a proper, a proper sign that meets the requirements, it goes through the next meeting. Is that, that what happened here? When did you file for the plan? I think it was in August. It was brought up through the chair? Yes, absolutely. Um, your sign permit was brought up. Um, we referred it to the zoning enforcement officer to try and get his opinion on whether or not it meets the criteria. And what happened? To, to this date, he still has not replied. I believe it's eight weeks now. It's been longer than that. Um, longer than that. August. We've sent multiple letters. We've sent a letter to, I believe, uh, the liaison for him, the Board of Selectmen. And for some reason, they, even though it's zoning enforcement officer who should be making uh, a decision when we ask for it, a determination on the bylaw, he has not. Um, with no determination from him, I think we have to go forwards as a board, make a decision one way or another for you. Yeah, and one, that way we have a letter that's been written or anything you seen it. I haven't seen it. All right, this is the and letter from this board to the building inspector. The planning board received an application for signage for Coyotes. Oh, that, that letter okay, I've read that. You've heard that. And what was the date of that letter? So September 24th. This is October. Um, this is just another request. So this has been the third that I know of. And that's two? So that's three in the last month. That's two. Plus the initial one. The dysfunctionality of this town and this government is not my problem. I'm, I'm, I agree with you on that one. But right now, we're, we're going we're gonna to act on the sign that's been presented to us tonight. So, everybody seen the sign? Everybody? Mm -hmm. That is the proposed. Yes. 
photo of the existing. Okay, existing. And it looks to me, looking at this, that the proposed sign is larger than the existing sign. An existing sign is what, 200 and... 200 and what's, what's the existing sign? It's supposed to be the same. We just took off the round to put a little gable on it to make it change the look a little bit. But if we got to put the, the, the round part on, we put it back. It was a square foot. Mm -hmm. What's the square foot supposed to be? Um, 100. Yeah, it can't exceed 100 square feet. Mm -hmm. Actually, it can't exceed 100 square feet. Um, it's 5% of um, the front of the main building. You can't exceed 5% of the front of the main building. Mm -hmm. And in no case can it be more than 100 square feet. So the front of the building is. And what's the square footage of the proposed sign? Which one there? Uh, 93 feet, I believe. Yeah. Well, that's. If it's not <clears throat> measured right. Well, what is, what is the correct measurement on it? It's written on there. 291 square feet. Mm -hmm. So the sign that you're almost 300 feet. I, 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 I know. There's obviously a discrepancy in how you guys are, are measuring it. So the, the existing sign is 300 square feet. Yeah. Five feet above. Yeah. It also projects more than five feet above the building. Limit is seven feet. I mean, it's five feet. You got seven feet above the building. It, 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 it doesn't meet any of the criteria it's laid out in the bottom. And I'm just talking about facts here. I told him to replace the sign. If, if he's got if he's got something a little different, the, the, the sign guy's got to adjust it. I told him to keep everything exactly the same, except put the gable there, just to change up the look a little bit, rather than the round part. The, the gable increases the size. All right, so we're over on the five percent. <coughs> we're over on the square footage, and what's the other one? We're over five feet. Over the, the projection above the building. Are all those things over on the existing sign? Yes. Yes. So it's, it's, a, it's irrelevant because it has your limitations. We, we you had 10 the, years to correct this problem. The, the, the way it works no. is no. you have a pre-existing so. non-conforming sign. You can maintain it. If you replace it, you have to conform. I know how it works, George. Thank that, you for that, the that's advice. Cool. Yeah. I've gotten plenty of counsel on that. Fine. I'm, I'm just, right. That's the way we do it. All right, we have an application for a sign. But I, I, want, I wanted to know, so where was the, these rules were in place 17 years ago. Yes, they were. So what happened? I what no happened idea. with, I wasn't here. I don't know. What I wasn't here either. I don't know. Huh? I wasn't here either. I can only go through the past history and look it up. There's no building permit for any signs. And there's no, there's no application for any well, signs. Well, then you need to look to this woman right here. And where well, are can they? we, can we, let's, let's, let's <laughs> not. All right, we got a motion for a new sign. Can I get a motion for the sign? So no. I make a motion to a motion to approve. All right, one second. Motion in the affirmative. All those in favor? All those opposed? Nay. Nay. Mm -hmm. So if you don't agree with our decision, you're more than welcome to take it up to the Board of Appeals. All right. Start at the top, work our way down. Mm -hmm. Got any other paperwork there? No. Uh, no. Are those copies of the letters? All the letters. We right. need all back in here. And the mail to the sign guy. Which way? Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to move forward. Yep. All right. Release of bond at Full Betterly Lane Subdivision. Subdivision excuse me, was taken at town meeting, and the taking document has been recorded with the Hamden County Registry of Deeds. The one issue um, that was that you had questioned was whether or not the trees had been there for a year. According to subdivision, trees have to be live a whole planting season. They were 
um, completed in May of 2013. So this is ready to go. Obviously, DPW is signed off on it. Yes. Oh, do, do I sign this clerk? Mr. Four. Oh, Vice line. Chair, and then um, I'll second the motion. Ralph can discussion. Cross out um, Tide's name for me, Ralph, and sign. Okay. Any honor? No, I'm good. No, I was happy. I talked to Mr. Parent, and just said everything yeah, seems good. Right. And the same thing is for <laughs> Wisteria Lane. Do we need to vote on this? Oh, I'm yes. sorry. Yeah, one second. <laughs> uh, we have motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Next up, we have a release of Bonnet Full Wisteria Lane. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Same thing applies. All right. Make a motion to approve the release of bond in full for Mysteria Lane. I'll second that. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Partial release of bond for Bella Vista subdivision. Yes. Bella Vista is the subdivision that's off of Prospect <coughs> Street. It's not completed yet, and they are looking to have their bond um, released impartial. DPW has inspected, agreed, and we are giving back $8,400.52. We have to be the other us anyway, so. And we're still holding on to that. You want to make a motion or? We'll make a motion to partial release a bond for the, what was read? Bella Vista. Vista. Bella Vista. Bella Vista. Yeah. Yeah. In the amount, and in the amount proposed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And DPW's uh, calculations yeah. are attached. All right. Motion made, seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Right, and the same thing goes for um, Winterberry. Winterberry is off of Porter Road and um, what's that? Oh, yes, that, yeah. that, that, that used to be Juniper. Thank you. Oh, it's like the Juniper Lane from the Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, um, and this one we are releasing. I have not been. I have not been down there. Well. So, uh, Winterberry. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> He's just about nice finished. It. The uh, drainage system was. $54,939.84 is being released. It's about half the bond Make a motion to uh, partial release the amount uh, stated. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, I can get us in the door. Let's do... Let's jump around a little bit here. Let's do a request for signage. Trey okay. Olive. Sure, <laughs> well, I figure we'll get through the easy stuff and then we'll okay. take our time to talk about what we need Business to talk about. Business name is Trey Allen. <coughs> Business owners. Uh, names are Joe and Michael Maruka. They're uh, 24 Stone Hill Road. Property owner's address. Is, property owner is Ralph Zepke. Uh, proposed sign is 16 square feet, single sided. It is attached to the building. It is a permanent sign. And that's about it. Not illuminated. Mm -hmm. You provided a waiver of site plan um, a, few weeks a couple ago. weeks ago. Sign's very simple. But <coughs> and it meets the requirement. <coughs> Excuse me for the business district. Discussion. I think it meets all the criteria. Yeah, it meets the criteria. And by the way, the, the, this they have now converted this into a storefront. Looks really good. Oh, awesome. I'm to this is. They're working real hard on it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I beautiful really shot. hope they try succeed. Yeah, George, you know, with the what? custom yeah. rails. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah try to. Same side of the building right there. All right, do we have a motion to approve? Sign for Trey Olive, one eight Shaker Road. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Right. Another request for sign. First there, Smith Funeral Home, Tintonio, Main Street. They're just changing it up. Yep. Same size, uh, no changes. Company name <laughs> is Forest Hill Smith Funeral Home and Crematory <laughs> Services. Um, street address is 220 North Main Street. Um, square footage of proposed sign is 12 and a half square feet. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Is attached to the building. It's single faced. There's a permanent sign. Total number of existing sign is two. Total square foot of existing signs is 31.5. Um, total square feet of proposed sign and existing signs is 51. <coughs> I think that's it. Place they're just, yes, yeah, they're just you know, changing it up a little bit. Refreshing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Same size, same everything. Discussion. That's good. Make a motion to approve the sign permit for Foster Smith. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Request for a waiver of site plan review for Cloud Nine Marketing Group, 302 Summers Road. Property owner is Wayne and Evelyn Pilon. Owner's address is 320, 302 Summers Road. Name of proposed business is Cloud9 Marketing Group. Owner of business is Dion, no, Dylan Pilon. Owner's business, business owner's address is 302 Summers Road. Property address is 302 Summers Road. Uh, property district is 7 Oh, there's a way of Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, summary of business operation. Provide marketing solutions to local businesses, including uh, content creation, copywriting, SEO, campaign design, general marketing strategies. Um, the house is just for phone and email only. No clients at a home. No commercial vehicles. No signage. Home office. Pretty much. Yep. Marketing solutions, local businesses. Uh, yes. Any questions? Comments? Suggestions? Right, so we have a motion, motion to approve the waiver of site plan review um, contingent upon our 20% and uh, other criteria as stated in the zoning bylaw. I'll second that. Motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Plus for signage for Big Y. Um, that's that's not on the agenda. The the Big Y was determined, and I spoke with Dan Hillier today with regard to this. It really wasn't a sign. If you remember, there's two um, towers at Big Y. Mm -hmm. One says Big Y first class or world class. They were only able to put a sign in one of those towers because you can only have one sign on the building. So they put an American flag in the other one. This was years ago. The flag has since um, apparently been reversed. It was It's backwards <laughs> for some reason. Um, I never noticed it, to tell you the truth. Um, and uh, it's been faded and everything. So what they were doing was just replacing it with a graphic. So it's really not a sign. It was that, um, but I did talk to Dan Hillier and he agreed with me. So okay. that's off the, the menu, I almost said. <laughs> right, off so the agenda. Do uh, request for waiver of site plan then for health traffic fitness and wellness, 45 Crane Island. <coughs> Little letter here from Health Tracks. Dear Planning Board, we Health Track fitness, fitness and Wellness are requesting a waiver of site plan review in order to have a two-foot diameter satellite dish installed by Dish Network. The dish will be installed in a location that is hidden from plane of view uh, of the front and side of the building. Um, we have permission from our property owner, Falcone Retail Properties, to install the dish. Norman A. Frenier, Jr., physical plant director. This is basically just charters moving out, or I forget who East Long Meadow has, but they're uh, switching out. Okay. No, we actually have charter. And it's charter. switching Comcast out to Comcast. So this is just a two, 
foot in diameter, not visible from the ground. So we'll want to plumbing read the same waiver of site? Okay. okay. It's basically the same as yeah. they just is, you know. Mm -hmm. I think he drew a picture of it. It's only two foot diameter. Yeah. When it was first mentioned, I had visions of a six foot dish up on top. I think only a couple of uses on that big number. Yeah, well, they're not even that big anymore. Uh, one of my houses. Make a motion to approve. Second. All right, motion made and second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, let's do the elevator square footage for construction improvements for the town hall. Aye. The question that I've been asked to present to you is from the building committee. Um, and if they go forward with this project, as you know, the town is not exempt from its own bylaws and any additional square footage, regardless of whether or not there's going to be employees using it or not, um, you have to add a parking place. So any additional square footage. Now, what they're planning on doing is for ADA purposes, because apparently the threshold will be met by other um, construction that they're planning on doing or improvements, should I say. They're just looking for you to say, yes, you agree that an elevator is ADA um, required and will not require an additional parking space. Let's see if you can for you. Or if you don't agree, then you say no. I'm just going to ask a stupid question. Why is it brought in front of us? I'm not going to. I think it's a stupid question to anything ADA. I, that's because, well, no. Be, should, be, be, should it be building this way? Um, no, because it's site plan. And the it's town changed. hall is under special Okay, permit. so, so what, what they're actually asking is, is not, not whether the elevator is required or not. What they're asking is whether the square footage of the elevator is exempt from the parking requirement because Correct. it's an ADA required um, facility. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. So what they're asking is whether we would agree with that statement yes. that they will not need another parking place because the uh, the elevator, in fact, is exempt from the square footage requirement. And that you have to understand this is under special permit. That's why it's come to you, not okay. building. Okay. Well, the elevator is obviously just going to you know help the general public and anybody with disabilities. Right. So if, you know, even if it did violate that. That's, that technology, why well, I would vote against it just because you know, this right. building doesn't have an elevator, it doesn't really need one, so whether it's an extra parking spot or not to go with it. So, yeah, it's going to ask for a foot or so, it? Only the size of the elevator. My, 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 the only thing I would like to add, though, is in our, our comment, we should mention to them that they need to check the side yard setback. Well, they will when they because they're going to have to file for an amendment to the special permit, right? But I think anyway. we, should, we should highlight that to them that we are not approving. Um, any exemption from oh no 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 uh -uh. side right. yard right. right I think what George was saying before everybody gets ahead of themselves let's not lose sight of right. you know, what we need to absolutely keep, keep in sight. absolutely yeah, yeah that, that that's sense. the only thing okay. that they were asking yeah. okay. and I mean it's still not a it still has to go before town meeting anyway so. uh, yeah I understand that so that's basically what they're All right. so I would agree with okay. their assessment okay. and again that, as far as ADA compliance I think they would go through our ADA the enforcement officer on whether it's required for ADA compliance. Does it need another parking spot? I would tend to agree if we needed it for ADA, no. All right. It, it's, so, an elevator is not an occupied space, so it's just a convenience. It's not right, it's but not, it's not, not, our, our zoning bylaw doesn't talk about occupied I, I understand space or that. unoccupied I, space. I understand right. that. It simply but, says square foot. Well, in the essence of general yeah. safety. Yeah. Well, let's let's stick with that for now. Yeah. All right. I think we should stick with that. <laughs> okay. Right, do you need a motion on it? We we just. Um. No. Just okay. an agreement. Okay. A basic agreement. You all agree? Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's um, approval of DPW to use monies from Fenway Lane for street improvements. On the yes. Um. As you know, number. Fenway Lane, the the board a couple of weeks ago, I um voted to. 
excuse me, um, initiate the procedure of taking the $8,387.06 that was left in a subdivision to um, put in a separate account to hold an escrow to use to repair the roadway. Um, the developer was given th an additional 30 days to complete the punch list, and we didn't hear from him. So, according to Attorney Donahue, what he needs the board to do is to authorize the Department of Public Works to do the work or to contract out to have the work performed and provide the planning board with invoices for the drawdown of the funds to be taken. And then he's going to request that the DPW take the same vote and then what will happen is they will make the road as, using this money, make the road as best they can and then take it at next town meeting. They do not have to have the road taken first because they're not going to be expending any municipal funds. This is strictly funds that were held on behalf of the developer. So moved. <coughs> Thank you. Motion <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> made and second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> uh, George, a few comments from. Yeah, I, I think Robin distributed my comments uh, back to uh, PVPC regarding yes, the land use priority planning mapping 2014 for East Long Meadow. Um, I didn't hear from any of you, you folks, so I uh, incorporated Robin's comments. There were two errors in the original one. I quoted Chapter 60 when I should have quoted Chapter 61, and uh, we had I had said that something was age restricted when it wasn't. Other than that, um, I added in to the best of my ability, um, a listing of the uh, the parcels that are owned by the town <coughs> in one way or another, so that they have a list of, of, of municipally owned parcels that they don't consider those to be um, privately owned. And also, uh, you saw the, the list of priority development and priority protection parcels uh, that I uh, put together in that memo. and. Uh, I sent it in on the 26th. It was received, it was, you know, and I got an email back from them today saying thank you for putting this in. I want you to be aware of this. This is, this is something that, once it's finalized, the state departments of that control development money and and protection money are going to look at when or if there's any request for funds for development or protection. So that, for instance, um, should a farmer want to go for an APR, okay, um, we need to have make sure that that farmland is listed as priority for protection, so that the state will approve, will give them an edge up in getting it approved by the state. And I tried to do that with the list of parcels that I put together. Um, again, it was just comments to to them whether or not they actually make any changes in the mapping. I don't know. My major objection was that they mapped a large part of the already development part of the town as priority for redevelopment uh, without any input from the town, <coughs> and, uh, opposition to current town zoning, and in opposition to uh, what uh, has been expressed by town meeting with regard to zoning. Um, so I asked them to remove that priority for redevelopment. When they say priority for redevelopment, what they're talking about is infill and uh, multi-use, multi-family housing and, and multi-use buildings where you have retail and, and, and residential together, all of which has been rejected by every time we've gone to town meeting. So I, I, I really object to them coming in and saying, no, we're, we're going to make that a priority for you when the town has not set it as a priority. And I just wanted to make the point to them in writing that, you know, we differ from them in our opinion of that. Hopefully they will accept it. I can't guarantee it, but <laughs> anyway, I, I wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. And if you have any thoughts on it, uh, now that we've talked about it in public, um, you know, let me know there's still a window to alter what I put together. But, um, <laughs> you know, that's where it stands. And I have the map that George is talking about upstairs. I, I thought the map was uh, <coughs> interesting. I guess that's the best way I could word it. Um, like priority development 
Uh, a lot of it centered around the center of town, which is fully developed and privately owned. Yeah, um, in order to congest it. And priority land for conservation um, had a lot of our already conservation land in it. Um, oh, yeah, they had really strange stuff like St. Luke's Church, priority for development. Yes. The Elms yeah. Condominiums, priority for development. <coughs> but they're developed people. I'm sorry. Uh, huh. You know. That's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Well, what, what, what it comes from is they do this based on aerial photography with no boots on the ground. The people that do this have never been to East Long Meadow. Right. Okay. Hmm. And, and they probably certainly never will. that authority. Yeah. They never will. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. They probably see more on their little cameras than what you could on the ground. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Yeah. This, in this day and age. All right. Last but not least, we'll discuss regarding the open space and recreation plan. I know we touched on this a little bit at the last meeting. Um, I think we anointed with Ralph our czar. That's what I heard. <laughs> I think that's what I <laughs> But not to use the PVPC grant money. Right. I you think know, that's some yeah, what we basically agreed that. on. Um, and, I mean, just so that the board realizes that it's not one person. It's going to be multiple departments. It'll have to be the rec department in on it. Robin will have to be doing quite a bit of that. Um, you want to get conservation in on it? Conservation, absolutely. Um, I think the last committee had, what, 12 people in? Yeah. Because yeah. we had outside people, too. Yeah, you were last committee, were you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we had somebody from the... Um, yeah. there, there's at least one independent recreation uh, support group in town. <coughs> Um, that you know has has been active on and off over the years. The Friends of Recreation. Uh, not, not call them Friends of Recreation. It's the East Long Meadow Recreation Boosters or something like that. Oh, and, all right. Uh, I forget what it is. Are they still in operation? Uh, they get together now and then. It depends on how much energy they have or how how bad the crisis on the playing fields is. I know Colin is really. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Involved, and in, um, I'm sure he'd be willing. To. Yeah, you know. So it, it's it's whoever you think has or the stakeholders in, in a plan like this ought to be, if not included on the committee, at least consulted. You know. I think that would be our next step is trying to put a committee together. Um, like I said, I, this is more going towards grant money. Um, you can't receive grant money unless you have the open space and rec plan, an up-to-date one. Um, and there is a lot of grant money out there for doing walking trails, for doing uh, recreational stuff. Um, if we could tap into any of that, it would be great for the town. Um, as we know, our budget's been extremely tight the last few years. Yeah, last time we put in for grant money, did we get anything? I some centers like the generator, I know. Yeah, well, we did, well, we did get we a did block with, grant. We did with um, Aguam when we paired with Aguam, yep. but East Long Meadow got the short end of the stick with that. Aguam got most of it. Um, what monies were received, unfortunately, we don't receive any information on it, how it was spent, when it was, whether the work is being done or not. I mean, we just don't hear anything. And what it was was, if you remember, the, you made a, you chose an area in the town and we did a circular for people to have their homes fixed, right, that was, and, I like that. and I don't know whether any of that work has been done at all. What I do know that's in the process is Dan is working with the AD, with the state ADA to do the um, town building ADA plan. And all that is, though, is to say, okay, this is what you need. I mean, right. it's not doing anything and the money is going, you know, for that. but. Whether the money from the block grant was ever used, whether any of the properties were improved, I have no idea. And here we are, heading into winter. And if you know, one of the big things was bad roofs for right, the yeah, people that couldn't afford to do it on their own. Down. So, but what I would suggest is um, <coughs> either contact the state or the if you haven't done this already, PVPC to get the current format yep. that that they require because it has to be in a very specific format. For the open space plan? Open space plan. And yeah. they changed it again. They, they the changed it. I they change it all the, all the time, so you can't use the last one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, anything else before we adjourn? Uh, yes, just one more thing. Um, Winterberry Lane subdivision contract is up um, December 15th or so. And I just this is just a renewal of that until they're finished. So 
Um, Michael, I just need you, if you wouldn't mind, to sign that, and then I will have um, Matt Campanieri sign it. I do have a motion. Yes. I right, do we have a motion to? No. Nope. More discussion? I'm sorry. Do we need a motion on? I'm sorry. Sorry. Further discussion. Um, the board had talked quite a while ago about subdivisions and sidewalks. And um, if we would uh, consider, in lieu of um, them putting in the sidewalks, taking money to use elsewhere. Yeah, um, Connie Wisbicki wants to come before the board to talk about it. And that. that's exactly, I told him I would bring it up. He would like to come and talk to us about it. I've got to hold, hold that thought yep. for a second. I was, I was on it. I apologize for okay. that. Okay. Well, I'm just going to get a motion. The contract, to right? Yeah. Contract. Sorry, I didn't realize we okay. needed a motion. I just a motion to, to approve renew the, the contract. Extension of the I will contract. second that motion. Okay. George. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Apology. No, nope, no, okay. I just you, I, you, I was my train of yep. thought was not where you were walking. And I've got, I've got uh, Connie was picky scheduled for January 13th. I right. just think it's something that um, before someone comes in, um, I did a little research. It's not. I can't find it in our zoning bylaws anywhere. I believe it's under our subdivision rules and regulations, it is. which um, I know. Connie had uh, mentioned doing a petitioned article. You just have it. to. And I said, well, <coughs> I said, there's nothing in the zoning bylaw to change. I said, it's under subdivision rules and regulations. When did you talk to him? Because uh, I talked to him this afternoon. At Capital Planning last night. Oh, all right. Because uh, I was going to well, say, this is a time whole. I brought this up and everybody was kind of against it. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah. You know, That's what I told him. I'm, I'm still for it. So you know, I, I knew it was. I knew Sandra was against it, and I couldn't and remember that's, that's George's. I, 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 was, I was against it. Yeah, to be honest with you, because I. I knew you were for it, Michael, but I, I couldn't remember. I anything. would think it would be something to look at on a case by case, subdivision by subdivision. Well, that's a little subjective, though. Yeah. Well, I think you would still sure. have to. That was one of the, the problems. Only the because last. if a subdivision's yeah. going in and there's walks going in front of it on the main street. You want walks going into that subdivision. Right. But yet if a subdivision is going in on the south end of town where in 50 years the DPW will not get there with walks. Right, and Bill, this is, is a perfect example. We're looking at 2,500 feet of road. 25 feet of road, <coughs> have no access to sidewalks, no plan of sidewalks getting to Bella Vista. And I have the, um, I found in the archives and um, had uh, had actually Frank Morandi printed up a new one for me. I have the sidewalk plan. Remember <laughs> the sidewalk plan that we yeah. had 10, 15 years ago and where it's proposed and everything. Well, I think the proposal now, the, is the whole town. The, was. the, well, the thing is, is the $75,000 that, I mean, yeah, yes, yeah, $75,000 that go in every year. We have 19000 left from last year. So... Don't do it. Okay. Don't. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah every, it, every year it goes in, and Don't. it's supposed Don't. to be well, for sidewalks. But this year, the whole thing with that seventy-five thousand, um, in which I mentioned, was that's voluntary for appropriations or capital to put it in, and so I recommend it. There's nothing in writing that says that they have to put that in. Oh no, no. There was a was there was a resident in right. town that wanted that, and it was approved many many years ago. And every year at town meeting, it, it's just reapproved and reapproved. Well, from what I understand, she was going to bring it. She had brought a petition forwards for five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And the town said, "How about if we?" That was like forty years ago. Say seventy-five thousand a year will be put in here. Right, so and obviously they didn't spend it all last year. No, they so, didn't. Um, and so Connie was picking wants to come before us and talk about that. Yes. All right, that would be nice. I, would and I think that would be great. Okay. I've scheduled him for okay. January. Okay, good. 13. Cool. All right. Anything else before we? Nothing yeah. else. The minutes. Did you receive your minutes? We because no one responded. I, I got them. I, I wrote mine up and then I, I did not get them mailed in. And then okay. Friday. That's why I don't have any. And, right. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I do have. Some issues with the minutes that I'd like to talk to you about. With what? Uh, with the different minutes. Um, All right, so we're not ready to address this tonight. I'm not ready to address No, I don't, I don't have any anyway okay. because Donna said that she doesn't have any of the changes. Right, so I think that's it, gentlemen. Motion to adjourn. Second. Anyone's discussion?
If Ralph's all set, we can all set. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. All set.